Hi, welcome to Cooking with Kayla. I'm Kayla, and today we're making an easy 30-minute dinner recipe with meatballs in a skillet with tomato sauce and cheese on top. This is one of my favorite 30 minute meals to make because you can make it a little bit different every time and just make it your own. The secret is that for an easy 30 minute meal, I like to use ground chicken or ground turkey. When I'm making meatballs for an occasion, whether it's a party or a holiday, if family's coming over, I usually use the trio of meats, but it's not really lean and it's not really that great to be like making it for a 30 minute Monday night meal, excuse me. So I like to use ground chicken or ground turkey to make sure that whatever I'm making for an easy weeknight dinner is lean and it's healthy and it's a good option if you're eating it not for a holiday. So we're gonna start by putting in this ground chicken into the bowl. I'm going to use gluten-free breadcrumbs next. Beans. You were just so quiet. Can you go somewhere else? I'll give you some more blueberries. Sorry, guys. Quick beans. Now, everybody's seeing me give you this snack. Take it. Go. Okay, next we're gonna be adding breadcrumbs. I use gluten-free breadcrumbs here because I eat a gluten-free diet. So if you use gluten-free breadcrumbs, that's fine. If you wanna use regular breadcrumbs too, that's totally cool. I prefer the ones that already have seasoning in it just because I want my meatballs to be really flavorful, really packed with seasoning. So I've chosen an Italian seasoned breadcrumb here. If you don't have seasoned breadcrumbs, you can use the unseasoned ones and add whatever seasoning you'd like. So we're gonna add about a cup of seasoning here to the pound of ground chicken. I'm gonna add a little bit extra of Italian seasoning on my own. This is a blend of garlic, oregano, thyme, basil, salt, pepper, and red pepper flakes. Next, I'm gonna add one egg into this. Then I'm going to add a little bit of Parmesan cheese. This for me is the game changer, especially if you're making gluten-free meatballs. It's really easy for them to dry out and they don't keep moist in the center. I know everybody wants like that crispy crust on the outside. I definitely want that too, but you don't want it to be dry in the center. So adding the cheese really gives it a moist center and it keeps it from drying out. I'm gonna mix them all together now. I added about two tablespoons to three tablespoons of Parmesan cheese, but when you're mixing it, if you feel like you need a little more, or if you need to add a little more breadcrumbs, you can totally add a little more just to get that right consistency. If you are dairy-free, you can also use dairy-free Parmesan cheese. You can use any kind that's made with almonds. You can use a soy-based kind. Whatever dairy-free Parmesan cheese is your favorite, they'll all work the same here. So you're really gonna wanna combine this until it all looks like the same texture. You don't want to have too big of a bite of breadcrumbs or like too big of a bite of the seasoning. You want everything to be combined together. And then we're gonna use a cookie scoop to make sure that each individual meatball is the exact same size. I'm the worst with a wooden spoon. <laughs> now, if you're really Italian, you're probably wondering why I'm not putting my hands in this, which is actually the better way to do this. I just feel like the meat is always so cold that I hate doing it, but we're gonna have to go on with our hands. This is honestly the worst part. I feel like when I make meatballs with my family, this is probably their favorite part, and it's my worst part. So you just wanna make sure that this is all combined together. If you have too much breadcrumbs, you're gonna feel like this mixture is really dry, but as long as it's still feeling sticky on the outside, you're in good shape. Okay. So we're gonna wash our hands after that and then scoop the meatballs into the skillet. 
Okay, so next you are going to take your oven safe dish here. You can use a skillet like I'm using here. You can use a cast iron skillet. And if you don't have any of those, you can also sub a casserole dish. I'm gonna put a little bit of oil on the bottom of the pan just so it doesn't stick. Plus the oil will help the meatballs get like that really crunchy texture. When I was a kid, my grandma used to make Swedish meatballs all the time. We called her Omi, because Omi means um, grandma in German. And she used to make these Swedish meatballs that were so delicious, but I used to beg her to cook one for me in a pot, in like the bottom of the pot before she added the sauce. And then she would take it out and let me have it on the side. So it had like all those crispy edges and it was like warm and moist in the center, but I used to hate it with the sauce. I would literally wait just so I could have one before the sauce hit it so I could get like that crunchy outside. And I honestly, I don't think my palate's changed much since then. Cause like here I am making crispy meatballs without a lot of sauce. <laughs> So these don't have to be like perfectly round. Like I said, this is like an easy beginner recipe. It's 30 minutes, anybody can make it. If you wanna go back and make these meatballs round after you put them in here, you totally can, but it does not need to be perfect. The flavor is gonna be there either way. So just add as many as you can and just make sure they're arranged so they are not touching each other. You want like a little space between each meatball just so they each cook evenly. You might also find that if you feel like touching the meat again and rolling it in your hands, you can probably fit a few extra meatballs than if you're just scooping them in with the cookie scoop. So the idea here is that if you have a pan big enough, you wanna be able to put all the meatballs in one pan. You don't wanna to have to do this twice, like first round cooked and then the next round of meatballs cooked before you add like the sauce and cheese. So just make sure you pick a pan with the most surface space so you can get the most amount of meatballs in. And I like to use the cookie scoop because it really helps me make sure all my meatballs are the same size. I'm really bad when it comes to making sure everything's the same size so it cooks at the same time. So like sometimes I'll have one meatball that's too big and another one that's like almost mini. So the, the cookie scoop really helps me. Okay, so all of my meatballs are in here. They're not touching. There's a little bit of oil on the bottom. I pre heated the oven to 350. So now these are all gonna go in the oven for about 15 to 20 minutes until they're fully cooked. You wanna make sure that the inside has reached the right temperature, the outside is cooked, and that they almost looked browned on the outside as though they're crispy and you're really gonna get that crunch before you pour the sauce on top. If they're not cooked, you don't wanna pour the sauce on top because that's gonna really change the cooking temperature in the side, inside of this skillet. So if you need a meat thermometer, I always use my meat thermometer. Just pop it in and make sure that before you take these out of the oven that they are fully cooked. All right, so we're gonna pop these in the oven for those 15 to 20 minutes. If after 15 or 20 minutes, they still need a little longer, you can leave them in for another five to 10. All right, so this is set at 11 here. Okay, so once those meatballs come out, you're gonna leave them in the skillet. We're gonna top it with vodka sauce here. You can either use your own homemade vodka sauce, a vodka sauce that maybe your family has made. I like on a Sunday to make a big batch of sauce, either tomato sauce, vodka sauce, even a pesto. And then I like to individually baggie it and put it in the freezer. So when I'm looking to make a meal like this on let's say a Tuesday night when I really only have the 30 minutes to cook this, it's ready to go. 
You can totally buy your own sauce from a jar that works as well. Or you can also buy canned sauce. So if you buy a can of tomato sauce that's unseasoned, you can just make it your own by adding your own homemade seasoning to it. And then it kind of becomes like your special recipe. So whatever sauce you want to use, but I'm using vodka sauce, then you're going to have mozzarella also to put on top so it melts it everything together. If you are dairy-free, you can also use dairy-free mozzarella either in a block form or in a shredded form, or you can use regular mozzarella cheese in shredded form as well. An easy way if you're looking for a lean meal on a weeknight is you can use a low-fat version of any kind of mozzarella. So I use... Oh, beans, you're messing me up. So I like to use bean, please. Look, you can't see anything. I like to use fat-free mozzarella when I'm looking to make sure that this meal is like really lean on a weeknight. You're really messing me up here, Bean. Okay. Nine minutes until something comes out. Okay, so we're gonna take the meatballs out now. They are still on this oven safe skillet here without a top. You don't wanna cover them because you want them to get browned on the top. I left these guys in for five minutes longer than the original 15 to 20 minutes just because I was really making them big and rounding out like these shapes and making sure that they all looked cute. So I did make them a little bigger than normal. So I added them for an extra five minutes in the oven and I checked with my meat thermometer just cause I am a person who had salmonella once and I will never have it again. So next you're gonna take your sauce. We're gonna pour the sauce on top. We're gonna add the cheese and then we're gonna pop it back in the oven just to make sure that the sauce is warm and the cheese is melted. But moral of the story here is that the meatballs are fully cooked before I start adding the sauce. So I like to add vodka sauce. Vodka sauce was like always a treat when I was a kid. We would have tomato sauce during the week and vodka sauce on the weekends when we like really wanted a special pasta dish. So for me, I feel like for the rest of my life, I will always think vodka sauce is like more special than tomato sauce. Next, we're gonna add some fresh mozzarella or whatever kind of cheese you're choosing to use here. We're just gonna layer it on the top Again, nothing fancy. It's gonna melt. It's gonna look pretty no matter what once it melts. So we're just gonna add a little on top. I usually add about half of the mozzarella ball, maybe a quarter of the mozzarella ball. You can also do shredded cheese on top if you'd rather do shredded cheese. Okay, and that one's fine. Next, we're just gonna add a little bit of seasoning to the top. This is the mixture of red pepper flakes, basil, oregano, salt, pepper, garlic. I'm gonna add a little bit extra just on top of each of the mozzarella pieces just to get like this really pretty look once it's all melted. And then we're adding this all back into the oven for if you're on 350, I would say about three to five minutes. You don't wanna focus on cooking it. You just wanna focus on melting that cheese. Am I the only person who like washes like the tips of my fingers in between every single step of a recipe? No. <laughs> I feel like I go through so many paper towels. I probably go through a roll of paper towels for like every single recipe. Okay, we're adding it back. Here. And set your timer for five minutes. Okay quick break. Okay, so the meatballs have been in here for just about five minutes. We're gonna pull them out. Ooh. 
It looks so good. Okay, so like I said, we're just putting it in there to really melt that cheese on top. You just want the cheese to be melted and the seasoning to be mixed in with it. I'm obviously gonna add a little more cheese on top just because I really like the Parmesan. You can skip this. You can use dairy-free Parmesan, really anything you want to make this dish special. I like to serve this with a side of pasta or even a side of rice, just so you have something in addition to the meatballs. You can always add any kind of vegetable you want into this skillet, or you can even add the vegetables into the pasta that you're serving with. But the idea is that the star of this show is the meatball. So we're gonna do a little taste test here. Let's find a good meatball. Oh, I love when it's crunchy like that. So it's just perfect. And you can see, like, when I pull it up, I just love that part that's, like, crispy on the bottom. That's definitely, like, the best part of this whole dish. Mm. I just think everything's better with vodka sauce, honestly. Quick, easy, 30 minute meal, one pan. I hate doing dishes, so this literally is the only dish you'll have to clean up. Gluten free and easy with a dairy free option. That's it. Oh my God, I could just eat the whole thing in one sitting, but would not be well received. Okay, I swear I'm done. Okay, great. 